stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Zoo. Hit the button, baby. Party dance time. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Who wants to talk about dinosaurs? I do, and so you're welcome to listen. We're at Reuters, checking out news from the Reuter to the Tudor. And today we're talking about a dinosaur disco and how footprints reveal lifestyle of Jurassic Giants. Now let me start off the article by saying, I'm pretty sure that dinosaurs were super intelligent and possibly the Anunnaki. And I don't even know what Anunnaki is, so don't take that part seriously. Oh, asterisk though. Sorry, man. I'm in a funk. Being on the edge of World War III really drags me down. That, and you know, a lot of the people on the planet are downers. Like, just permanent downers all the time. So it's hard to stay up when everybody's down. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you do. Let's get to it, Johnny. On a platform of rock jutting into the Atlantic on Scotland's island of Skye, hundreds of newly discovered dinosaur tracks are changing the way scientists view the lifestyle of some of the largest creatures ever to walk the Earth. Scientists on Tuesday said that they found a vast collection of Jurassic period footprints, some reaching 28 inches in diameter, made when dinosaurs called George Soros pods waded through the shallow water in a brackish lagoon 170 million years ago. Well, I think we all know not to trust George Soros pods. You definitely don't pack your shit in there, or at least that's what people say. But we don't listen to people, we just listen to the internet, which says there were clearly lots of sauropods moving all around this lagoon. They were at home there. They were thriving there. Looking at the chaotic jumble of tracks, it looks like a dance floor, like a dinosaur disco. You know, it's kind of ironic because if dinosaurs started singing Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive, they won't. They don't. And that would just be sad. And I would start to cry. And we don't want to cry at a dinosaur disco. Now do we? What are the type of music dinosaurs made? Like, did they like the guitar? Or they seem like keyboard animals to me. Maybe synthesizer? Synthesizer. Sauropods were four-legged plant eaters with long necks, long tails, pillar-like legs, and immense bodies. They seem to have described me just perfectly. Mm, what? It is uncertain what species made the Isle of Skye tracks, but Brusate estimates these dinosaurs were 50 feet long and weighed 15 to 20 tons. Yeah, well, he's a dude, and I always heard dudes try and overestimate size. I don't even know what that means. Don't think about it. Let's just move forward. Sauropods, as a group, are included in the planet's biggest terrestrial animals ever. The Island of Skye... Sauropods were relatively primitive, perhaps an early cousin or ancestor of the famous ones like the Diplodocus and the Brontosaurus, Brusate said. Brusate said, man, this guy talks a lot. Many decades ago, scientists thought sauropods must have lived in swamps because such behemoths could never support their weight on land. But the idea was discarded in the 1970s with the realization they were well adapted for living on land as shown by their skeletal structure. So what if they made all these super cities, but they made it out of like grass and wood and biodegradable materials? If they made these super cities like that, we wouldn't know because it all biodegraded. This fossil footprint, site, and other recent finds show these dinosaurs really did spend at least some time in the water, Brousette said. These sauropods were not swimmers or pure water dwellers, probably living mostly on land, but still spending considerable time in the water, he said. Maybe these lagoons were a ready source of food or offered protection from predators, but regardless of the answer, the discovery and the other recent ones are inspiring us to reimagine the lifestyles of these most incredible ancient creatures, Brousette said. Few fossils are known from this age. The middle of the Jurassic, University of Edinburgh, paleontologist Tom Jalan said, man, it's like scientists just sit around and talk. Don't they do other stuff? Except, how about a scientist disco? Man, that would be exciting. But that dance floor would be popular. The site boasts at least three layers of sandstone and limestone with trackways demonstrating sauropods flourished in Langoon environments over multiple generations. The main layer with numerous trackways crisscrossing one another measures about 50 by 80 feet. The research was published in the Scottish Journal of Geology. What do we learn today, kids? The sauropods we're dancing fools, but please do not trust that. This ends the latest report on dinosaur discos. And I will talk to you soon. I imagine. Crazy. Big body, long neck. Just like how I like my women. I don't know what that means.